God bless you. God bless you. Can the church say amen? amen. And I know, can the church say amen? amen? And I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to open up with a song. Then we'll move forward. <clears throat> Father, I stretch my hand to Come on, y'all, help me. No one sisters and I say celebrate because I know that many of our hearts are heavy mine included because sister Rachel was a friend of mine and oddly enough we were here about four months ago the same place just about going over the same thing but the Bible teaches us that we don't sorrow like those who have no hope All right. amen so I'm going to say it again. We don't sorrow like those who have no hope. Oh, yeah. Because our hope is in Jesus. And even though with COVID things are a little different. Even though, like I said, many of our hearts are heavy. I do want us to take a second and put our hands together. And celebrate the life of this woman who loved the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. Celebrate the life of this woman who knew who Jesus was and yet knows who he is. We are now going to move forward with our program on today as it, as it has been provided by the family. And we are going to start with a selection from Brother Eldridge, J. Eldridge Jackson. After that, after he is completed with his selection, we are going to hear scripture reading, the Old Testament from Elder Robert Hammond, Jr. The New Testament from Bishop Ronnie Richardson. And then I will come back with the prayer. And we will do that in that order. Let us receive him by saying amen. Amen.
Timothy, the fourth chapter, six through 
8 verse. I am now ready to be offered, and the departure, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth that is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that are loved of his appearance. May the Lord add a blessing for the reading of his word. Man, as we prepare to enter into prayer, all heads bow. Gracious Father, our God, God of the universe, God of just all things. Father, first off, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, because even despite this situation, you are good. Because according to your word, you told us in everything to give thanks. For this is your will concerning us in your son Christ Jesus. And God, we say thank you for the life of Mother Rachel. God, thank you for the seed that she placed on this earth. Lord, thank you for just memories that we have with her, of, of her individually. Thank you, God, for the time that you allowed us to have that jewel on this earth. Thank you, Lord, for every time she said something and made us laugh. And every time, God, she got on the floor and praised your name. Thank you, Lord, that through her life, we were able to see one of the true embodiments of love. Not just love by lips, but love God by action. And Father, as I pray right now over these, your people, my ask is simply this, that you would number one, strengthen each and every one here. God, because all of our hearts in some respects are broken. Oh, yeah. oh God, some of us have lost a friend. Some of us have lost a cousin. Some of us have lost a grandmother. Some of us, God, have lost a sister. Some of us have even lost a mother. But God, whatever the connection, only you are able to heal. And I ask right now, Father, that you would strengthen all of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I ask secondly that you would give us peace. Give us that peace that even in this time of despair and in this time of anguish surpasses all understanding and father give us peace through your word understanding that we all as long as the lord delays his coming we all are going to have to go this way and god give us peace to know that she is with you give us peace god because she lived a good life but more than that father she lived a godly life oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, because she is with you. Lastly, God, I ask that you would give us courage to move forward. Give us courage to move forward in a way that not only pleases you, God, but also would make Mother Rachel proud. And give us to just live out, you live out her legacy, rather. Her legacy of life, her legacy of love, and her legacy of praising you. Father, if you allow us to do these things, we will bless your name. We will thank your name. We will never let your name go down. If you believe it on today, just shout amen. amen. Shout amen again. Amen. One more for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. We are going to have remarks here. Uh, but before we have remarks from Mother Bogan, is it all right if I say something about Mother Rachel? Everybody knows Mother Rachel just has certain things, certain qualities about it. I think that all of us can agree that one of the qualities that Mother Rachel had about her is that she was a comedian. <laughs> now, now, I know it's a homegoing service, but I mean, she's home and we're here, so we might as well have a look for it. Amen. Amen. Remembering who she was. Because, and I say that because myself and Mother Rachel we didn't talk often, but I do remember 
that she liked to talk. <laughs> hey man, if, if you got her talking, she was going to talk to you. She was going to talk to you. And this was a few months back. I want to say maybe it might have been back in March sometime, March or April. And uh, we had a chance to talk. And she told me, you know, certain things I can't tell, but then she told me certain things I can tell. While we were talking, she said, Elder Lackey, you know, she had that slow way of talking sometimes. Elder Lackey, <laughs> you know, I want you to know I lived a good life. And I want you to tell everybody I lived a good life. Don't let them be sad over me. And then she stopped. She said, well, let them be sad for a little bit. Let them. <laughs> she said, let, let them cry. Elder El Lackey, I wanted to cry for about a week. After that, you've been crying to me. <laughs> That's right. She said it. <laughs> but she said she wanted me to tell you all that she lived a good life. She said, I, I didn't have all of these other things that everybody else had. But what I did have, I had Jesus. Yeah. Now see, I, I, I want us to understand this. Things are going to go away. I want, I want you all to hear me very well. Things are going to go away. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter who you have. They are going to go away. But the only thing that's going to last is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I'm happy to tell you that she had him. So that's why even though my heart is heavy, I can still be glad because I know she had Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Mother Bogan, Mother Bogan, let's receive her by saying amen. amen. Then after that, we will have another remark. type of friend had to always be in each other's face. We want the type of friend had to be at, every, at each other's house every day. But I had a friend, a friend indeed. And I want to say this on the behalf of the motherboard. We want to send our sympathy, our gratitude, because Miss Rachel was one of the mother, whatever she did, she wasn't the type of person who wants you to spread it. What she did, she did from her heart. And every year, every year, there has not been a year went by that she did not give the mother boy a gift. She gave it, and she gave it from her heart. You never heard her say what she did, how she did, and when she did it. She would come up to you and just catch you and keep going. And she wasn't the type of person like to brag about what she done. That's one thing I like about my friend. And a lot of nights, she would call me. She's a girlfriend. Our word was girlfriend. And I'll check on me. And she said, oh, what you doing? I said, well, I'm doing nothing and everything. She would talk. And sometimes when she talked, she's a girlfriend. Or oh, you sleep as a girlfriend. I don't want to sleep on you. <laughs> I said, I don't want to sleep on you. But you know what? I had it. And they loved it. Not only that, she was so we were so close to severity in our in our severity in uh, Rachel and I was going He said, Mama said, when you get rich, I want you first give me mine, because if you don't, you're going to be on gave it all away <laughs> and before you, I get my part. And we made this a commitment to each other every year on each one of our birthdays. I would be a little long home. I would take her out to long home for her birthday. I said, girlfriend, eat whatever you want to eat. I said, all on me today. And that's what's the same way she would do about me and everything. And my daughter, which could not be here today, my daughter is not a type of person, you know, like my son. He, he can take on with anybody, anybody. But she's a kind of laid back and wild person. And I don't care, whenever she came in town, she would go and sit with Miss Rachel. 
And Miss Rachel would have that girl laughing so hard. And I would ask her, I said, Kelsey, what Miss Rachel do to make you laugh so hard when anybody else didn't do? She would always call kids her friend. I don't care wherever she's stationed. She would always ask me about where this kids, how this kids does. You know, only thing I can say about my friend, I'm going to miss you. But one day, we will get back together and I will have a steak dinner. <laughs> but to everyone in the family, you have our deepest sympathy, our love from my family to your family and everything. And thank God for her children, not only her children, but her daughter-in-laws and all her in-laws. When uh, Savannah, they started calling me Auntie Dot, that is what I am to them all today. I am the Auntie Dot, and I appreciate all of you. And God bless you all. This right here is actually a voice message of uh, this voice recording of a uh, remark that was not able to be here. So we're going to play that from Miss Stanton. Family, 
you are here today because she lived. Today, you are here to celebrate a life well lived. This is not the end for Miss Rachel. This is just the beginning. Life to be continued. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Again, we love you and we are here for you. Blessings and love to each and every one of you. Amen. All right, all right. We are about to have a selection. Selection, Yes, God is Real, by Sister Sharita Stanley, and I will come back to you at that time for the presentation this week. Amen. How many believe that God is real on this morning? Amen. Do you believe that God is real on this morning? Amen. I understand that we're hurt, but God is still real. Amen. Amen. Can you just put your hands together if you believe that he's real? Can you just open up your mouth and praise him if you believe that he's real? Because although we're sad, I believe Miss Rachel is giving him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 I know we had a graveside service, but can you just help me give him praise right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's what she likes to do. She likes to praise God. Amen. She loved to give God praise, amen. amen. And one of her favorite songs was that he is real because he is real, hallelujah. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we're dealing with, no matter how bad our hearts are hurting right now, God is still real, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You all know the song, can you just help me sing it on this morning? There are some things I may not know There are some places I can't go, but there's one thing, one thing I know, that God is real, for I can feel Him in my Washed and made 
How many know that God is real? Amen. He is real. He is real. Before we uh, bring the speaker up, I do want to take a second to do this. If you all would join me in just giving honor to her sons for taking such good care of her. Not only her sons, but also her daughters. That's right, because Miss Rachel didn't believe in in law anything. You were her son, you were her daughter. And I just want to say thank God to all of you all uh, for looking after your mom. I want you all to also especially you know, keep keep her sister and her brother in prayer. And everybody experiences loss different ways, but man, some people are just closer than others. We want to make sure that we keep everybody, everybody, all of the family lifted up in prayer. Amen. 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 And right here, right here, we are going to have Bishop Roberts, who's going to come and say a word on to us, a word to us on today. Uh, before we do that as well, I also want to give honor to all of the dignitaries that are here, all of the bishops, pastors, if you would. I don't want to go through and miss somebody. If you would, just kind of wave your hand and let everybody know that you're here. Elders. And thank God for all of you ministers, missionaries. But we want to hear a word from the Lord on today. Because even in a time like this, especially in a time like this, amen, we need to hear a word from the Lord. So we want to receive Bishop Roberts by saying amen. Amen, amen again. Go to 
church to have church. Uh, you can have church wherever, you know, um, hard. Well, it's come to pass now that we have to do some of those things. This is the church right now. This is the place where we are represented to God. But I thank God for Sister Rachel's family, for her sister, Sister Janice, her brother, Brother Pee, Pee Wee. And thank God for her nieces, nephews. They are like her children. And I thank God for you all and the love that you showed to them. For children, you all have really exemplified what the Bible spoke of. Uh, it says that the children should requite their parents. And some people don't really know what requite means, but it says make a proper return for a favor, service, or wrongdoing. And you all have done that. You have shown that love to Miss Rachel, taking great care of your daughter-in-law. Pray in these last days. God bless you. I won't be before you a long time. It's limited. There's a scripture, Hebrews 13 and 1. It says, let brotherly love continue. And I took time this morning to look up what is the shortest scriptures in the Bible. And this scripture is one of the top five shortest scriptures in the Bible. But it has one of the greatest meanings that it would ever have. Anything could have scripture in the Bible. In this day and time, Sister Rachel, she showed her love when she was living. I can truly say if anybody loved people, Sister Rachel did. Sister Rachel, while I pastor the church, every Father and Mother's Day, she showed my wife and I love. She would come and give the other one $250 on the outfit to dress us for that day. Now that's love in action. But not only she showed love to us, Sister Rachel did not want me to say something. She begged me not to tell that when she was living, so I tell that. But another thing that she did, how many mothers that has won Mother of the Year in this church <laughs> that is here today? I don't know. But every year, almost, <laughs> Sister Rachel, and she didn't want it known. Some of you won Mother of the Year because Sister Rachel would give four and five hundred dollars to help you win. Now that's true love. Some people talk it, but I can say this lady showed it. I've known Sister Rachel 41 years now that I've sat at Linwood Park. And I think she is one of the oldest, her and Sister Janice and Brother Pee Wee is one of the oldest members of that church. And I thank God for the life that she lived. For brotherly love should continue with us. We have to love now like we never did. We have to forget those things which are behind and reach forward toward the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. And I thank God that Sister Rachel knew how to do that. She called me about a month or a month and a half ago. And if I ever got a phone call that meaning a lot, that was one. I thank God because this day and time, we've got to throw our arms around one another. We've got to love one another. And we can see the government don't hardly care a lot about us. But if anybody got to show love, it's got to be God's people. Amen. It's got to be the people of God that exemplify what love really is. God gave me this this morning. As I was lying down, he said, some things you can teach because you can read the scripture and you can make people holler. But some things you have to go through to preach. You have to live it. The 
Sister Rachel lived it. Sister Rachel had her business fixed with Jesus. She had choices that she could have made that could have helped her to be here longer. But she decided that I'd rather go be with my father. I'd rather go be with the Lord. And I'd like to think also that Sister Rachel probably felt, I don't want to put a lot of extra burden on my children. I'm just going to go be with the Lord. That is all right. Amen. Amen. If you have somewhere to go. Somebody said moving is all right if you have somewhere to go. But dying is all right. If you know you got your business fixed with Jesus. Amen. I challenge each one of us today to search ourselves like we never did. And there's a song saying, if Lord, if you find anything that shouldn't be, Take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. That's the main thing today because we don't know where death lies. Here we are. Some of us are standing on other people's graves. Hallelujah. But here we are, but we don't know when we're going to be laid to rest. We don't know when that time comes. But the song said, put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. God's going to pay us all off. Yeah. But what kind of paycheck are we going to get? Because God has a check for everybody. Yeah. Hallelujah. But it's up to us to write in what's going to be on the dollar amount. Whether it's going to be eternal life. Or whether it's going to be eternal damnation. Fill your check out today. By deciding what you're going to do for Jesus. Because only what we do for God is going to last. Yeah. Young people are dying more today than older people. You don't have no time. You don't know. Bitch, the car, his sister got up and testified. And she said, I've been getting mail from heaven. But one day I'm going to get a special delivery. I don't know whether you all remember, but that, on that Sunday, hallelujah, she got up and testified. And then she sat down on her seat and I heard that her head went back. And she was dead just like that. She said, see, one day she's going to get a space of delivery. God told her that. But one day we all going to get a delivery. Death going to knock on our door. But all we got to do is just make sure that we got our business fixed with Jesus. Make sure that we have that love, that agape love. That love, that love in spite of what people do or what people say. We've got the love. The Bible said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you what? Have love one to another. I hope to pray that we all can say that today. I hope to pray that one day, I do believe that Sister Rachel made it in. I hope one day that we can shake her hand on that great getting up morning. Very well, very well. When all of God's people get together. And every day going to be like Sunday. None of us will have to depart no more. Hallelujah. We thank God today for each one of you. And especially for your family. For this family. Thank you for the honor. God bless you. to everyone for their prayers, condolences, and expressions of love during this time of bereavement. May God bless and keep all of you humbly submitted to family. to be glad in it. And he said, in all things, give thanks, but this is God's will concerning us. Amen. Amen. I would just like to stand and represent the um, Georgia East Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction yeah. of the United Woo! Churches of God in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Where Mother Rachel served faithfully on the Jurisdictional Church Mother's Board. Amen. And we loved her and we appreciated her. She was so awesome. She was so supportive of 
Bishop and I and the jurisdiction, and we just thank God for her. Many of the mothers are not here today because, you, as you know, they are all seniors and they didn't need to get out. And after we spoke with Craig, Craig suggested that they not try to come out today. But he, they've talked to him, they've called him more so Craig Peter than you because they've been talking to him. But we have a resolution here from the United Churches of God in Christ, Georgia East Ecclesiastical Women's Department, also the National Women's Department sent a resolution but it has not been properly uh, framed. And we're not gonna give anything half done, but we do have a resolution that will be given to you from the National Women's Department, where Mother Bernetta Kelly is the supervisor, and the National Supervisor, that will be given to you all at a later date, once it's properly framed. But these resolutions right here, I'm not gonna go into reading them, but they are for the Georgia East Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, our jurisdiction of Prilla is the Bishop Ronnie Richardson. Amen. 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 And we also thank God for seeing our presiding bishop here and our international first lady. We thank God for them also. So we ask you all, we just want to let you all know that we love you all and we're praying for you all always. Amen. Amen. out of this world, our deceased sister, Mother Rachel Harris. We commit her body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ at the second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their day, and the incorruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made into his own glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. If you all would repeat after me, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. to me. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. To everybody that's here, to the family, I always like to just say, I want to encourage you, like Bishop Roberts said, to love each other. And love is not just a word but love is a word that carries action. In fact, there was a deacon at our ministry, Deacon uh, Calvin Turner, not Calvin Turner, but Deacon Joe Turner. He said something that I like, and what he said is, love is the only word that has a beginning with no end. All right. I like that. It is the only word that has a beginning, but no end. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to love each other. Love each other. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of God be brought forth again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the shepherd, by the shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal Jesus, equip all of you to do his will. 
working in you, which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest and be with all of us. Everybody say amen. 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 We're going to return the remainder over to Donald Trimble. It's not from food to services versus parish. Because we're not touching each other, that doesn't mean that you can't blow somebody a kiss. Blow somebody a kiss because this could be our last time. We just don't know. Blow somebody a kiss. It's all right. Minister, if you'd like to greet the family upon the part of these grounds.